The appeal court sitting in Ibadan, the Oyo state capital, has upheld the election of the Ogun state governor, Dakwa Biodon, as declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission. In the unanimous judgments delivered by Justice Muhammad Danjuma, the four-man panel dismissed the appeal filed by Mr. Adekunle Akinlade of the Allied People's Movement. The appellate court also upheld the verdicts of the Oyo State Election Petitions Tribunal, which declared Governor Shei Makinde as the winner of the March 23 governorship poll. The sitting of the court is twofold. To rule on cases of the elections held in Oyo and Ogun states held in March. Outside the courthouse in Ibadan, the Oyo state capital, supporters of Governors Sheyi Makide of Oyo state, Dakbo Abiodun of Ogun state, and the candidates opposing their victory wait anxiously for the judgments of the tribunal. Soon enough, lawyers file out. A sign that deliberations have indeed come to an end. But then the news of what transpired may have already filtered out by those in the court as victory songs fill the air. The celebrations are for the governors whose elections were upheld by the tribunals. And then, counsel for and against the case of Governor Shei Makidia for your state expressed their views. Contrary to the decision of the tribunal, that all the documents tendered by the appellant were drawn on the tribunal, the judgment made it know that the judgment, uh, the documents were not dumped. It shows that the judgment of the tribunal occasion miscarriage of justice against the appellant. The Court of Appeal, in their wisdom, said they did not agree with the lower tribunal. They did not also say that they did not agree with INEC. INEC's declaration is sacrosanct. It remains until any other pronouncement from the court. In Ogun State, the party rejoices over the judgment. The APC publicity secretary in the state attributes the victory to the divine and the people. We see the judgment of the appeal court as a true reflection of the overwhelming wishes of Ogun people, freely expressed in the March 9, 2019 general election. The party believes that the latest judgment from the appeal court will put an end to decide side distractions of this burdened political association touting unmerited mandates. With this development, it's one less problem for the governors to think about, which gives them room to turn their focus on the issues for which they were voted into office. Meanwhile, the Court of Appeal has reserved judgment in the suits filed by the All Progressives Grand Alliance the Action Alliance and the All Progressives Congress against the election of the Umo State Governor, Emeka Ihedioha. Counsel to APCA, Professor Awa Kalu, had filed 21 grounds of appeal, insisting that Governor Ihedioha of the People's Democratic Party did not fulfill the constitutional requirement to be declared winner of the Imo governorship election. The court also held the appeals of Mr. Uchi Mwosu of the Action Alliance and the APC candidate, Senator Hope Uzodima. After listening to the petitions of the council to the two candidates, the appellate court reserved judgment on their suits. Away from legal matters, men of the fire service today prevented a major fire disaster in the Barua Ikbaja area of Lagos State after a petrol tanker went up in flames following activities of suspected vandals. The firemen put out the fire, said to have ignited after a petrol laden tanker that was being driven away from the point of pipeline vandalism, cut an electricity supply cable. According to eyewitnesses, eight petrol tankers were used by the suspected oil thieves in the operation, seven of which successfully escaped. Our energy correspondent, Olu Phillips, reports. First responders tidying up operations in putting off fire on this 33,000 litres tanker. You should wonder, so should every passerby or resident 
what a fuel tanker is doing in this vicinity, fully loaded. There's no fuel station, no leading bay or tank farm around here. This guy has just finished loading from their own loading bay, a vandalized pipeline some 50 meters away, and was almost home and dry when an electric wire ignited the tank. Well, let's make more sense of what is really going on here. Don't mistake this junkyard for what it, it appears to be. Uh, beneath all of these rubbles, uh, plastic bottles, um, piece of metal scattered all over this place, is a committed by vandals of petroleum pipelines. If you look to my left, that is the point, that's the trigger point where these guys have connected their own hose to an existing uh, part of the system's 2B pipeline coming all the way from Mossimi. And this is where they have perpetuated um, the theft that have been going on for, for days and weeks. And incidentally, uh, this happens usually in the cover of the deck and uniquely on this occasion, you have these trucks broken down trucks to my right, uh, which provides and shields them from any sort of um, uh, entrance and people seeing what they are doing uh, in the cover of the dark. But incidentally, again, is the fact that it does appear that there's a widespread apathy of the citizens, what I call the citizens' army, because you have a lot of houses around here, religious places around here, and this place is not completely isolated, yet we have these kind of incidents. The outrage, the, how these people, how they have been emboldened, either because we, they have people who cover them, people who empower them, people who support them, because this place is clear enough. You can imagine, will somebody not be, uh, be, be, be wary when you just see about eight tankers lying up around here, especially with the story, with the reputation of uh, vandalization of, uh, uh, of, of pipeline and petrol here, and yet that courage was there. Everything was filled up. That was the information. The perpetrators tried playing smart by removing evidence. The two plate numbers, but not so clever because we found this. The vehicle registration number. So if security operatives really want to track the truck owner and perhaps as a lead to other culprits, they shouldn't look too deep to find compelling proofs. But again, the situation is the same, the story is the same, the vandals are more brazen, and this is what they're doing, and it seems like there's no stopping them until they are stopped. From the pipeline road here off the Abbasa Gates in Epaja, Olu Phillips, Channel Television News. Right, let's take the conversation a bit further and discuss it a bit more. I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by the chairman, Lagos Health and Safety Professionals, Mr. Timothy Iwago. Thanks a lot for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you. Well, we understand that a bigger disaster, you know, was averted, being that, mm -hmm. that the fire service arrived and, and all that. Do you think it was contained better this time? Because obviously this is not the first time it will happen. Uh, I wouldn't say uh, it was contained better this time. Uh, the fact is, at what point did the uh, emergency responders, the first responders, at what point did they get the information and um, how long has this been going on in that environment uh, first of all I would say there is um, criminal uh, collusion by people in that neighborhood because this is an ongoing thing and they've been doing it and we are hearing from uh, eyewitnesses that um, eight trucks actually left before this one that had the problem. Seven the seven left. So this is the eighth one that had the problem. So what we are talking about now is how come everybody had been trying to cover up this and it's been going on? So there must be thorough investigation into this. But uh, in terms of response, whether they were um, a quick response uh, at this time or not, it's not the issue. The point is trucks were not meant to be found there about a cover-up and when you look at that area it's it's, it's congested uh, yeah. you know etc and then uh, the question is what sort of security architecture 
should, should you find in that kind of place? I mean, it's not a place where the trucks could move out easily, if you see from, our, from our, um, what our cameras could capture. Yeah. What would you be expecting in a place where you have conduit pipes like that? Now, when we have such pipes, we are familiar with the functions and duties of the uh, uh, Civil Defense Corps. They've been in charge of looking at this pipeline. And some locals, some uh, uh, vigilante groups have been given some contracts, like the OPC in, in the southwest here. They've been handling such, they've been supporting government in such surveillance. Now the question is, at what point did everything become so loose that trucks are loading? Well, it's, it is not a new issue. We are familiar with this type of occurrences, like we recorded uh, somewhere in Alaja some years ago in Delta State. We have it um, going on parts of River State, Imo State. You know, we have these things all over the place. So it is the duty of the security uh, organizations, the agencies. So where do you think they were when the seven trucks were leaving? Good. At, at no point did anyone say this is a bit sus suspicious. Is there no, uh, no round-the-clock watch, as you hear in other countries, and we're made to believe that security is being beefed up? What happened? You see, when we say security is everybody's business, every citizen of Nigeria has the right to call the attention of security agencies whenever he or she suspects foul play within the environment, especially when it involves moving highly volatile materials hydrocarbons of that volume, definitely it is not something you just go and pick and move. Somebody had to be given a cover-up so that he will have time to do this loading. You can load a 33,000 liters truck in 10 minutes. No matter the pressure, you can load it in 30 minutes. So the question is, who is in charge? When you are loading, it means product is leaving a pipeline through a valve system, and which means there must be a way of monitoring the flow. So there's a flow meter somewhere, so somebody must be taking record, or there must be a station that will be recording the movement, large volume of fluid, of liquid. So who is responsible? It's not a difficult thing to find out. Like the, the trucks removing their uh, uh, plate numbers and all that. Yes, yeah, you know, and even speaking about plate numbers, you know, you talked about perhaps this is some sort of cover up on the part of those who are there. We were actually able to capture the plate number there, as you saw Olusei. Is that something what, that can be used to detect at least either who is behind it or who was able to get away? Because things like this happen is on camera and we don't hear anything after that. Yeah, we have had a lot of it. You see, uh, it is time we rose up to actually uh, call for thorough root cause analysis. Investigations uh, involving the agencies, the organizations. Sometimes the Institute of Safety Professionals of Nigeria is not called upon when you want to do thorough professional uh, root cause analysis. And the security agencies are supposed to come up. There should be a committee that will really go into this. Not people who are not um, um, concerned. Uh, we, we, we are talking of people who have the interest of government at heart, not the, the, the businessmen who would want to uh, have it not mentioned. But we've had a lot of terrible things in our country. We've had a lot of terrible things where a whole factory got burnt with people roasted alive, Nigerian citizens, because uh, the, the, the head of the place decided to lock them uh, so that they don't pilfer. So you were now seeing a situation where you have to sacrifice safety on the altar of security. So we have had a lot of issues like this. Now, we must, if the government and the relevant agencies have the willpower, because like you said, a lot of cases like this have gone and nothing is heard after coming on air. So we are not happy, especially from the professional background. We know what it means. When you burn such volume of hydrocarbons, you are releasing into the atmosphere a high volume of smoke, which respiratory health of the people is affected. 
then you are looking at degradation of the environment. Right. A whole lot of things is involved. So we need proper investigation from security angle and root cause analysis from security uh, from safety angle. All right, thank you so much, Chairman Lagos Health and Safety Professionals, Mr. Timothy Uwago, for sharing us on the news at ten tonight. Thank you.